Hi everybody, this is Louise Fletcher with This Painting Life and today I'm here with uh, Susan Hart. I'm just going to switch so that you can see Susan. Um, uh, Susan is an abstract artist who I met, she lives in Nebraska. Uh, I met her or, or came to know of her work online uh, via Facebook and I just loved, I don't think that she's ever posted a painting that I haven't been in love with. So I had to interview her and find out more about her. So hi, Susan, it's really nice of you to be here so early in the morning. <laughs> oh, it's good to be here. Good to visit with you. So um, if you don't mind, it's kind of an intro to all of us, because as I said, all I know of you is your work. Um, so I don't know anything about your story. Um, or, so I'm really interested to learn. So tell us kind of a little bit about your artist journey, if you don't mind. How, how have you got to where you are now? Have you always been a professional artist or, or um, tell us what happened? Okay, no, I haven't always been a professional artist, uh, it, but it, that was my dream uh, right. since I was probably nine. Um, <laughs> you know, they would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I, there was three things. The, um, a, um, I wanted to be a stewardess, which that dates me, you know. <laughs> and I want a model. To be one of those two. Yeah. A model. a model. Right. And an artist. Well, the first two went by the wayside very quickly. Knew that wasn't going to happen. I always wanted to be an artist. And um, so I went and I was convinced I wanted to go to art school. Uh, but my counselor in high school said, you should go to college, get an art education degree. You know, then you have something to fall back on, but you know, that whole story. So I did. And um, I was very surprised by how that really took hold in me. I really enjoyed being a teacher. And I was for 17 years in, um, I taught elementary art in our area here in Cozad, Nebraska. Uh, I live in a, a rural community, which is about in the center of Nebraska. We are on the 100th meridian. Right. And, um, the town's claim to fame is, uh, it was created by John J. Kozad, and he had a son named Robert Henry. He was a part of uh, the eight in New York City, he was a part of the Art Students League, and so yeah. anyway, started on an artistic bent. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so for 17 years, I taught elementary art, uh, part-time, helped raise our two daughters, and um, really, enjoyed that but as our youngest was in high school and um, I decided you know if I want to be an artist when I grow up maybe I should focus on that just a little bit more and um, just did and I, I guess if anything I, I really want to encourage people to you know I was in my my 40s uh, 50s you know when I thought okay I'm gonna really focus on this and um, it's never too late to begin your dream and I don't regret the time that I taught I don't uh, because I think raising our daughters and, and uh, teaching kids to be creative helped um, inform what I do now right right so, so when, um, you, when you decided right it's time to to do something for myself where did you begin because I think that's where where lots of us are kind of right I know I want to paint or make art or whatever but where do I begin so where, where did you begin I just started I guess um, you know we have in our state we have a state art organization mm -hmm. and it's called Association of Nebraska Art Clubs and uh, a lot of communities have their own club and and so that's kind of where I began I started to be a little bit more active with that and, and entering that show and then I had entered an art educators show you know just kind of getting my things out there slowly and I had a brother-in-law who said Susan you should you should you should sell your work and I said to him Mike I should make more than one a year you know, and, and so I was, I, I, I just started creating more. What kind of paintings were you making? Were you making paintings then? Were you always painting? Yeah, I started out in college, watercolor. Fell in love with the, the fluid of, of 
that. And then uh, I had a stint of drawing. I loved color pencils, but I would apply so much uh, color, there wouldn't be any tooth of the paper left, you know, and so those took forever to do. And then I had um, gone to a workshop in about 2001 uh, under uh, an artist named Carrie Burns Brown, and she taught how to stain paper and she did collage, mixed media. And when I took that, that opened the whole world for me. Right. It, it brought together everything I loved paint, papers, textures, all of that. And uh, that's, that's where life started to really change. Right. And so from that moment, were you always working abstract or were you mm -hmm. more representational? I was abstract even in college, even in high school. Right. Um, so, it, you know, in the, in the 70s, <laughs> should I say that? Um, that's amazing, by the way. When you said in my 40s, I was like, are you not in your 40s now? So uh, that's amazing. But go yeah. on. Um, and, and I, um, you know, I, I thought, yeah, I could paint baskets of strawberries and know that they'll sell, but that's not, that's not what I love. Right. And I've always been intrigued with line, color, shape, design. I, you know, I've just, that just makes my heart sing. So I thought, you know what, I'm, I know my audience is going to be smaller. That's a given. Mm -hmm. But over the years, and I think it's our responsibility as artists to educate people, um, that has changed a bit. I, I see that there's, I think people are a lot more attracted to um, abstract. Right, uh, right. Uh, I, I persevered. I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this thing, I've got to do it how I feel. You know, this is how I communicate. Yeah. So I might as well communicate with the language I'm comfortable with. And so did you have any, did you, yeah, I know you took that workshop, but did you start taking more workshops? How did you learn? Um, it's because I remember thinking, oh, I, I might want to paint abstract quite a few years ago and then trying it. And of course, it's not as easy as you think. And then I'm like, oh, well, that's no good. So I need to learn how to do that before I can do it. I need to learn. So how did you, you know, where did you learn how to make the kind of beautiful things that you make now? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I, I, I would take a, a workshop a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, I'm now on the board of Autumn Art Workshop here in Nebraska, and we, we bring in artists from all over the states to, to teach. And I would always take the mixed media abstract and learn. And for many years, it was more about techniques you know, learning how to do all of these different, and, and they didn't really focus on good design. Right. And, uh, well, well, realism as well, but I think truly abstract, you got to focus on having, you know, those elements of, and principles of good design um, to make it work. I think it's almost harder to make an abstract work than realism because you don't yeah. have something to go from. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so uh, you really got to know, and, and you know, people say, well, I do abstract because I can't draw. I, I kind of believe it's good to learn to draw. You know, it's good to know how to do something, to take it apart and bring it back differently. Um, but it's also more intuitive and you, you got to risk putting yourself out there. But I think that's whether you're doing realism or abstract or playing the piano, there's a risk involved. And, and to truly, I'm finding that more and more, especially since taking CVP, um, the, the more you risk, the more you put yourself out there, the stronger the work becomes. It has more to say. Yes. Uh, yes. You're saying more. You know, yeah. and I, I took a workshop with um, last year with David Tress, who's a British landscape painter, mm. uh, abstract landscapes. Well, it's funny, I think they're abstract landscapes. He called himself a representational painter, but his whole thing is risk. And um, he he paints in layers on his paintings and then he'll just take a massive brush loaded with one color and just swipe it across the painting. 
And sometimes it looks amazing because he did a lot of demos for us. And sometimes it looks awful. <laughs> and, then he, and then and he, he paints on watercolor paper, big sheets of watercolor paper. Then he just rips up a piece of an old painting, sticks it over the top of the bit he didn't like, and carries on painting over that. So his paintings are like built up from all these pieces of torn off paper. They're stunningly amazing when he finishes, but sometimes he makes a real hash of them halfway through. <laughs> but, uh, but he said, you know, there's no decent painting without risk. And for him, he said, there's no life in a painting without risk. And I, I feel that way too. It's like you can do a very nice painting, but if you want it to really come alive, you have to have put yourself into it and taken a big chance. Well, lots of big chances. Definitely. So Definitely. What, what does that risk taking process look like for you? So talk us through when you're making a painting. Um, how, how does it go and, and where do you put where do you put the risk in? Mm. Oh, let's see. Um, you know, I, I took CVP uh, twice and I was my first time was in 2016. So I was part of that inaugural group and I thought I was risking until I took that class. <laughs> I realized, mm, not, not at all was I. Um, and so now uh, I think, you know, I just jump in and I, and I start painting and I keep telling myself, you're only in the beginning and don't fall in love too soon. You know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I will now purposely ruin a piece. Just like um, the, the, the um, artist you had just taken. Uh, in fact, one, one of the pieces that got into um, National Collage Society show as of late, I, I purposely uh, just kind of ruined it. And I sent the picture before and after to my daughters. And I said, okay, here it is. And I did that because I wanted to be accountable. I wanted to show them and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it better. Right. And I did. And it couldn't have gone where it ended. It couldn't have gotten there without the layers, without the pushing, uh, without the saying, Hey, it's only paper. It's only canvas. It's only board. And, um, it's only a little time. And, uh, it, that's, it, yeah, it's about layers layers of adding subtracting wiping off sanding yeah. off i i love that and you can really see it in in your work you can really see all those layers and how things are peeping through and i love the idea that there's underneath there some other paintings that i might have thought were brilliant as well but those have been hidden and they're covered up with this the one that you decided on in the end i mean i just think that's fantastic um so when you start though, are you thinking about something that is it all about the paint and the paper and the process or do you have an inspiration or something in mind when you start? Sometimes all of the above. Um, okay. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it's, oh, I'm enthralled with this piece of paper. I want to use this paper or this new stencil or this new technique I want to start with. Um, I have these little doodles in my, I have a little sketchbook and like when I go to church, I doodle, so I pay attention. So I might want to, I might start with some of that, but it never ends that way. I am not one that says, okay, I'm going to, here's my design and, and I'm going to do it this way. I might start with a particular line, but I just allow the painting to evolve and tell me what it needs next. Um, and then I kind of go from, from there, really. Um, there, I might start out with some colors that I haven't used for a while, or uh, I'm inspired by a coffee cup in a store of their color combinations or something. It's like, I'm going to do that. And uh, so that might be, it, it's, it's all of the above. I can, I can imagine some people while we're talking, what, when you just said that, they're thinking, what does she mean? I let the painting tell me what it needs. So tell me what you mean by that. So, okay. Um, yeah. I, you know, when I say that, I'm always a little bit concerned about people thinking I'm on drugs or something. Um, 
<laughs> which is, it, it's not. Um, as the painting evolves, I might think, you know, my, my whole intention was, I, I'm going to make a painting about red. But then, because of prior choices, I find out that red isn't going to work in this. It's going to need green or, or, or something. And, and so I allow that instead of just being st stuck or, or being like, no, it's going to be this way. Um, it, it helps me to risk more to say, just let it be. Let, let it, do the what if game. Well, this is not working. What? What if? What if? And that's, that's what I mean about allowing the, the painting to go in a whole different uh, direction. Um, yes. And, and I totally know what you mean. And I, I am trying to get to that. And some of the time now I'm at that. And some of the time I realize I've gone back to imposing myself onto it again. Um, I've decided it's going to be this way and I'm trying to make it work and it, it never works. Um, but I don't know if you find there's this tricky point and I'm really picking your brain now selfishly, pretending it's a <laughs> question, but uh, there's this tricky point I will get to and it happened a few months ago with the painting or about a month ago where it totally evolved into something new and it was exciting. It was really different for me and I was excited by it and it had come about naturally. And it reminded me of, um, it was a layered abstract and it reminded me of sediments in rock and layers of rock. So I got that in my mind. I, I even had a title, which was a great title. It was going to be called Sediments and Secrets. Ooh. I was like, oh, I've got the title. It must be almost done. And then I got into thinking it was about that. And then I messed it up. And some somehow in what I did in the next layers, it just... It got lost and now it's evolved into a completely different painting because I that one was history I could never have revived it again because I was too thinking I've gone from following where it was going into imposing myself onto it and it was only when it was too late that I realized what I've done um so do you do you ever have that or are you kind of pretty much in the intu intuitive part now I have slowly uh, it's been a process, but I think I'm I'm more intuitive than I used to be, um, and and really it is a process. And I will tell you, um, there's times just like you, <laughs> that's like, oh, what have I just done, you know? And and it's become forced, and it's become you know, um, and so that's that's when I'll purposely do something to react to, um, you know, like like Nick had said it's either going to be a yes or a no, but it will be something, you know, to go, go for. Um, but it, it doesn't always work. You know, I'll be the first to tell you. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. paintings come together so quick. It's like, Whoa, my goodness. And then other times it's an absolute uh, struggle back and forth. Uh, but I, I find I struggle more when I'm trying to push it where it shouldn't go. Yes. Yes. But there's, there's that fine balance though of there's times you have to push your, your intention onto it to make it work. You, you're, you're thinking, you know, it's like, okay, do I need to move this value darker, lighter? You know, there, there's that toward the end, especially that increments of, of changes that's going to either make it, really sing you know that's what we all yeah. strive for is making our painting sing not hum you yeah. know and and so there's where that push comes to to play that you know but um i suppose it's the i suppose it's when you try to do it too soon because i agree with you I, and i i quite like there's a certain thinking point where you're balancing it out and you're saying, oh, because I made that dark thing down there, I need to make sure there's something over here, otherwise it's looking unbalanced. And that's a bit like a puzzle and that's quite fun. But there's a, somehow it's a different quality when you, when you try and impose yourself, isn't it? It's, in that case, I suppose what you're saying is you're asking the painting again, you're asking it what it needs. So it needs a little bit of dark over there or it needs something, some red here. 
as opposed to thinking, oh, I've got a great idea now. I'm going to go and make it. I suppose that's the difference. Well, and you know, and there's some artists that do that and make it work very well. And there are some paintings that are more uh, conducive to that. You know, it's like you have kind of this free flowing background thing and you're going to impose a figure on top of it or a certain time and, and it will, can work. It can work. And, but I think like you said earlier, it's not doing that too soon. You know, you had this great abstract background. Now it's ready. Uh, to be the background, you know, and, and you're working to build the fore, foreground. What, what is it you're working toward? Um, always, at least for me, always with the idea in the background that it may not be this. Yeah. It may have to change, you know, this is what I would like, uh, but, but do it with a, you know, open hand. I, I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying um, is I come in, you know, you know, like I, I've been given this gift and I need to unpack it fully and learn about it, but also with an open hand, you, you know, so that I, I'm open to something new. Um, and yeah, but, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to come off with the idea that, oh, it, it's also got to be free flowing all the time because um, no, no, there's times that you can, you know, it's like, I need to make a barn painting, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or, so, or say, you, say you're painting representationally and maybe, I suppose it's like, say you're painting a jug of flowers on a table and you've, and you've done an abstract background and now you're putting your jug on. It might be the thing that you, you feel like it's going to be a red jug, but it really, it needs to be a blue jug, even though the jug in front of you is red or something. Or it might be that you need to put more contrasts in than are actually there. So I suppose it's that idea, again, of responding to what the painting needs, even if it's representational, um, you're still responding to what it needs to be a really strong image, as opposed to just copying what you can see. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's you know, it's taking out your artistic license. Yes. And, and push it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> I was just thinking about, there's a, um, well, he's a really a business speaker, marketing guy called Seth Golden, who writes a lot about creativity, but he tends to write about it from a business perspective. But he has this saying that I absolutely love, um, which is that you shouldn't do anything unless you think it might not work um, in creativity. So if you want to be creative, you should always be thinking this might not work. Um, mm -hmm. And that will give you the best results. And I absolutely love that as kind of a, a rule for, for life almost because it takes fear away. So you're going to take this big brush, put white paint all over this bit and it might not work. Um, but if it doesn't work, what's the worst thing that happened? You learn something um, and you'll do something in reaction, as you said, to respond. Right. Because I find sometimes, and, and don't you, when you start slowing down and you don't know what to do, you know, and there's that point always in a painting that it's like, I don't know what to do with you. You're in that ugly teenage stage and something, yeah. right? and you just don't know what. And so sometimes, you know, make a mark with chartreuse and it, it's either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it, but at least it, it brings you out of that middle ground, you know, that middle, like, yes. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'll sometimes, somebody taught me this. I'm not sure if it was on CVP or somebody else told me, but if you're really stuck um, or, or you're leaving for the evening and given up painting, because I usually paint at night, um, do something really dramatic. Do something not boring on the painting before you go. Yeah. So that when you come back in, you've got something to react to. And it's okay if it's something that's just scribbled all over everything you've already done, because you can paint it again. Exactly. Uh, but at least it gives you something to think about. And I'm doing, I'm just about to start a course with, um, with uh, about 40 um, artists. And it's all about finding your own voice and, and finding your joy in art making through finding your own voice, which is something I only discovered in the last year to 18 months. Before that, it was always a struggle for me. Um, and I'm wondering, 
in what at what stage of your development do you feel like maybe you always had it but when when did you feel like you got in touch with your own true voice so that you looked at your work and you felt like that is me that represents me you know um i always thought i did make authentic work you know because you know like i said earlier i was always doing abstract and mm -hmm. that that was always not the norm you know yeah um for me so i thought oh i'm always i'm always uh being authentic but in all honesty it's this year <laughs> right. did i come right. to um that wonderful spot and and it was this summer i was getting ready for a show and and um after i'd taken cvp just this last year and it was like this is it you know at least for a while this yeah. is where i have always hoped i would be didn't think I would ever get there or didn't know how it, it, would, it would be. Um, I, I, am, I am coming from a, a point deep within th that even surprises me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it's where skill and technique meet passion, desire, expression. And, um, it, it, and, it, and you can't get there without effort. Yes. You, you know, you, you, it, it takes time. And for me, it took longer than, than someone else because I, I didn't put in maybe the time, you know, and again, I don't dwell there, but, um, and it's different for everybody. And I, and I think that that's, that's the hard thing is that we look around us and go, Oh, oh she got that. She figured that out before I did, or he, he's got that. Why, why can't I get there? And, and it's all so individual. Yeah. And you got to cut yourself some slack and you just show up. Even if it's for five minutes, I, I think one of the greatest aha moments for me was when uh, Nicholas Wilton said go little but often right I was like oh yeah and and it can show up differently and and to open your your, your box into what that looks like May, maybe it's um, I don't know sorting out a box of papers or something it's but you're there you know you're 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 open to what can arrive and um, yeah, it, it's, so my authenticity is getting stronger because I have the skills, my, my skills are getting better mm -hmm. and I'm able to communicate. It's kind of like being a, a small child. You know, I have a, a grandson who has a lot to tell me. I just don't understand him yet, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's getting there. And he'll, he'll learn to say the words and he, you know, so it's that skill set. He, he needs to communicate. And I think that's me. I'm finally getting to the, the skill sets that's helping me um, bring out what, what's inside. But I'm also doing some looking in. And, and I think it's also important to give yourself that quiet time, that creative time, that thinking time. Um, a critique I did uh, with, with Nick was I was finding out I needed to ask more questions and you can't ask questions unless you're quiet enough to think. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and so I'm giving myself stopping time. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop the crazy. You know, like you, you, you do your beautiful walks, uh, you know, in your countryside. That that will inform your paintings whether you know it or not and i was, I was actually just going to ask you something exactly on that topic because the paintings behind me which i'm working on at the moment um i i they're the most abstract things i've done but i realized that after they 
they they went in a completely different direction than where they had been all of a sudden and I tipped them upside down and suddenly they were something else but afterwards I realized they were representing this place I had been to uh, the day that I turned them upside down which is this kind of canyony we don't really have canyons in Britain but it's the nearest thing I can think of to a canyon with waterfalls coming down um, and we were there on a really sunny day with blue skies and that was what was coming out in an, a form that no one but me would recognize but it was coming out and I see that often it I'll do something abstract that I'll take a picture of it and then I'll notice that in my photos on my computer there's a photo of something I took on a walk that kind of looks like maybe it's the same colors or maybe it's the same shapes as what I painted but it wasn't intentional so I totally get that it's it's yeah but I think one of the things that you mentioned that I think people struggle with and it's so hard when we say you have to work to get to the place that you're at you do have to work but it's not horrible work is it I mean it's not like slog but I think you have to let go of the idea that you're I have to let go of the idea that I'm supposed to be as far along as you or as far along as someone else or as good as Picasso I have to let go of that otherwise it will be a drudge slog depressing frustrating process yes um but if I let go of that then I can just learn but then I don't have any I don't have anyone to compete with except myself yesterday right and that's the exciting then it gets exciting because then it's like everything you do is better than what you did the time before as long as you keep going exactly, exactly. but we get trapped in that don't we did you ever have that did you ever have other people that you were looking up to and saying oh, I'm never going to be able to do what they can do yes <laughs> and <laughs> And I think we fall into that from time to time, moment to moment, you know, because um, there's always someone ahead of us on our path and, and people behind us. And, um, and, and, and sometimes, you know, I get caught up even, um, okay, so I get into some shows or, or whatever, and I, 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 I try not to hang out in in my successes or linger in my defeats either one of those really and um because i can defeat myself with myself you know <laughs> um, that's a good saying i love that uh so uh, probably yeah three years ago uh you know prior to my first cvp i was at a point where you know, I, I'm in uh, the Burkholder Project Gallery in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is uh, about three mi uh, three hours east of where I live. Mm -hmm. And I, she's given me a show every year. And so I'm getting ready for this show. And I would say the, the, the last two years of that, you know, um, three years ago, it was a struggle. And it, it, every piece, it was like, can I just have one? It, it, it was like this long, laborious labor pains. It was just like, and it wasn't fun. And I was like, I gotta get this show. And, and, and the consistency, I would have some really good pieces. I'd have some okay pieces. And I was really struggling to, for consistency. I, I wanted pieces that I really liked, all of them, you know, not just some that I settled so I could, fill out a show yeah <laughs> and um yeah I, I was losing I was there was an inner turmoil because it was like this is what I want to do I, I want to be an artist I, I want to create but but why is it so difficult and why am I beginning and I wouldn't say hate it I, but it I just wanted it to be easier mm -hmm. and and that's when CVP came in my wheelhouse, I didn't even know about this artist. And um, I kind of think it's a God thing, but, but anyway, um, it, and, and I it just through, through it all was this process that I, that I learned um, go little but often. And, and that I wasn't the only one out there that had the exact same struggles and the longer we stay out from the creative process the harder it is to get back in and it was like 
I'm going to have this whole tribe that feels the exact same way. This is nothing new. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and then <laughs> for anybody listening who doesn't know, and I can't imagine there's very many who don't know now what CBP is because everybody comes on, talks about it. But um, it's a, if you don't know, it's an online 12 week program that's run once a year with a Californian artist called Nicholas Wilton, who teaches, um, just really teaches a whole art making process. And well, for me, who never had any art school education and very few workshops in the past, it was like, almost like being handed everything I had needed. Um, mm -hmm not everything I needed to make brilliant paintings from day one after the course ended, but everything I needed for the rest of my life to keep exploring and developing and growing and learning. It's like he gave us the keys to everything. He didn't just give us some, a few tips. So um, for anybody who's interested, it runs again, usually if it runs next year, as usual, it will be sometime beginning February. Um, I don't, they haven't announced any dates yet, but when those, that comes up, I will let everyone know because I'm aware that it keeps getting mentioned and it uh, always in glowing terms. So <laughs> um, I'll make sure everybody knows when, when that is. Um, what would you say for you with, since we're on CVP, what, what was it for you? It might be hard to boil down to one thing, but what do you think made the shift? How, apart from the, the going often, was there anything else? Well, what, what first attracted me, um, you know, he had offered those free videos and, and just in, in those, what I had learned in values, I was looking for something, I was weak in value. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I had some talent in, in the design aspect, and, but it wasn't consistent. I didn't always know why does this work, you know? Right. Um, I could always say this doesn't work, but I didn't know why when it did work and, and to can, you know, continue that. And so, um, I, I would say from the get go, it was that whole design and value and, and, and thing. That's, that's what I needed. What totally took me by surprise and what I was not ready for, um, was the, the soul part, the, the whole, you approach your painting not just through technique and you know while that is is important what makes it sing what brings people coming running is the authenticity it's it's what you do with that skill set you know yes. that makes it you the you that no one else can create oh, yes yes that's what I, I i feel exactly the same way it's like and it's permission to be you once you realize that it's permission to stop looking at everybody else if we're all unique and we all have something special to say then you might as well get on with doing your unique thing and stop looking at the people who have nothing to do with you so i may really admire your work but i do i don't have your life experiences i don't come from the same place as you i don't nothing about i've got the same dna so our paintings can't be the same and once you realize that, then there's nothing to envy in anybody else. I think that was my biggest takeaway from it was, oh, okay. So yeah, it's, it's exciting to watch people who are further along than you because they can do things that you hope one day you can do in terms of the quality of work. But you stop thinking, how did they do that mark? And I wonder if I can do that mark. And I wonder, because that never works anyway, does it, to copy someone else? So. Right. And I think it also helped me appreciate everyone else's um, approach, everyone else's artwork even more, because I, I'm, I'm taking away all of the um, comparing and stuff, and I can just be in your paintings, you know, and I can enjoy your marks. And I might say, ooh, how did she do that? And I'm, I'm um, not critiquing it, but I'm exploring it. Yeah. And in, in, in a way that's like, oh. I'm going to try that, not to be you, yeah. but to bring it through me. And um, so, so actually it's, it's opened up the, you know, I've always enjoyed looking at other people's artwork, but it, it's opened it up it, a whole new world, my own world, but also appreciate everyone else's yeah. even better, you know? So if you think about, your life as an artist 
what what do you think are the biggest rewards of being an artist for you mm. that's a big question i know <laughs> well really many days i will wake up with the idea thank you for allowing me to be an artist um mm. i you know what at one point some of the ways that um i view the world I always thought it was a curse when I was younger. Uh, I see now as a blessing, you know, um, I do see the world a little differently than a lot of people around me. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm seeing that, that that's okay. You know, that's okay. And um, I'm, I'm embracing it and even teaching to look at the world more so with my grandkids and my own children, because I'm at a different, different place and and you know i might stop the car on the side of the road and say look at this sunset just look at this you know um it's helping me to view people and the world around me with with greater uh grace and beauty oh that's and, um and that i can express myself in ways that even surprise me because continually this is not this journey if we are willing to take the risk and embrace it fully with our arms up in the air and our eyes wide open it's a ride it's a ride that yeah. i am finding is joyous and it's like and i get to do it yeah. not everyone gets to so i need to um come to it and you know th that's i guess my 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 why that i create it's because we've been given this gift while i believe everybody's creative um you can't solve a simple problem if you didn't have that creative wiring but there's some of us have been given this this gift of desire it's it's the way that makes our heart sing it is the way that we truly communicate the best and um it's a responsibility if i've been given this gift it's a responsibility to unpack it and you can't just you know the sometimes some of the best gifts are in the bottom of the box so you have to keep working and unpacking it and and uh and that's what i'm doing and i'm seeing it now as wow not everyone gets this yeah <laughs> you know and so i got i gotta I got to work at this and, and it becomes not a, not a drudgery, but it's, it's not like I have to, I get to, you know, yeah. and that's a different mindset. Yes. And, oh, I love that. Yeah. It's not that I have to, it's that I'm lucky enough to be able to. Yes. And, and though I am finding that if I don't do it, it literally physically makes me ill. Mm. But again, that's happened probably in the last five years, the last three years, um, my, when I really embraced this why I, I create and, and all of that, I am seeing the importance of it and I am learning to, nope, can't do that today because it's a studio day. I am, I am learning to make it more important. That's a really good point as well, because I have some people in my group who struggle to are struggling to create at the moment. And um, in some cases, because they have a lot of other priorities, um, a lot of other things calling that on their time and not always things that absolutely have to be done, just things that feel like they have to be done. Yeah. Um, and it's that I, I often suspect that's what you just said. That's about making time for yourself. That's about thinking you're important enough mm -hmm. to have that time and that you're more important than vacuuming under the sofa or something that can wait. You, you, you're more important than that. Yeah. And, you know, and I was there. I was there. A load of laundry was more important than that desire. I mean, I really wanted to be out in the studio, but I would say, oh, you know, I'll just do this. And then, then when I have a little bit, why you know uh i i would allow my art to take the back seat and it's like sometimes it didn't even get in the car right. and it's like, why? why this is what i want to be when i grow up and and i think women have that struggle 
you know, because we think about a lot of things. It's, it's, it's how we're wired. And, and, and we oftentimes allow those things to take, take over. Um, and, and it's timing too. And, and if anything, I, I want to tell others, it's like, don't beat yourself up. You know, um, I, I know when I was, was younger, people would say, you need to draw 15 minutes every day. And it's like, and if you don't have that discipline, then you can't be an artist. And I, I told myself that. Well, apparently I don't have, I'm not disciplined enough to be an artist and it's what I really want to do. And, and, um, that's bogus. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, and, and all that does is just, you know, packs another guilt trip suitcase to drag along and, uh, timing. And I, I look at what I was doing was important. Could I have made more time? Yeah. But it has brought me here and that's what's important. It has brought me here and I, I've got the time. And what would be sad is if I didn't give over to my art now that I have the, the time. And um, I think we also have to look at it differently. Small chunks or yeah, I need this. It's going to make me a better person to my responsibilities. And I used to see life as either or. Either I could do my art or the rest of my life. You know, either or. Right. Really, it's not. Life is a mobile. It's not a seesaw. Um, and, and our circles are bigger. You know, maybe we have a sick child or a sick parent or, you know, and, and that circle is a little bigger. But the art still can be there. It's just a little bit smaller. And, and I think as artists, we need to see the, see our life differently. It's not either or. That's such a good point. That's such it's a an point. and. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I squeeze my painting in between a lot of other things and mm -hmm. it might be 20 minutes a day. And actually what I found, and there might be other people who are the same as me, I, if I do more than a couple of hours, it's too much for me. Then I start messing things up. Exactly. So, Thinking. So actually small chunks is fine for me. Half an hour every day is fine. Um, on weekends I get a couple of hours, but that's all I need. And yeah. someone else, they might spend, you know, 12 hours a day painting and be happy, but everyone finds their own way. Um, but it's amazing what you can get done in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I know. Enough time to start a story or create a mark. Um, yeah. 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 And, and even if it's just to straighten up your table, mm -hmm. you know, or, or whatever, you, you showed up, you know, yeah. you've given yourself that time. And like you said, it's different for everybody. It's, mm -hmm. it's different. And that's the other thing. We have to give our permission uh, to ourselves to be ourselves. Yes. Yes. And while we can go to uh, workshops and take this and that, glean those nuggets for those people, you know, from those people that work for you, but you can't be those people, you yeah. know, um, and, and you have to, um, a lot of information can be overwhelming. So you have to just go, okay, focus on what I need and, and apply it and then pick up another nugget kind of, kind of thing. And not every, not everything is going to be good for you or for me you know yeah and i think sometimes when we're first starting out or a lot of my group members are returning to art after a long time away when we're in that situation we can tend to think that anybody running a workshop is an expert and is right and therefore what they said was right yeah. um, not just one way of looking at things or one way of doing things but right and i have to follow that and then you get I, I went down those rabbit holes for a while a few years ago and chase oh, oh they said to do this oh but they said to do this oh but they do that and it's like it's just too many voices in your head after a while mm -hmm. there's only and, room for one voice in your head I think and that's your own voice and once you get comfortable with that um everything else falls into place and sometimes your own voice is too much you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it becomes too critical. Uh, but yeah, even instructors, you know, and I've taught and you're, you know, you're teaching and um, when you're teaching a class, 
you have to narrow all of your knowledge uh, into one particular thought. And, but that's not how you always do it. You know, back to CVP again. Um, you know, people would get kind of overwhelmed, like, oh, this is the, this is the only way I can do this. Well, he was teaching that way, but he actually, he had to narrow it down in the most simplest form to, to uh, teach a principle, let's say. But that's not the only way to do it. And as you went along and you could build on it, it's like you can't divide unless you know how to, to add and then subtract and you, you know so so it builds on that and I think we go into workshops thinking this is the magic this is going to teach me everything when actually your own experience uh, all your education all your learning builds and helps you understand and um, yeah you know I look back you know even my college years and go Oh, now I see what they're saying, <laughs> you know, because some of it's just experience. Some of it is just, you got to push the paint around or the paper or whatever in order to, you know, it took me a whole year and a half after the first CVP class to absorb all of that and to apply it and to think, you know, I really thought at one point I must be a moron because <laughs> I can't get this. Um, <laughs> But, but I'm realizing that, oh, this is it, because it's a process. Yeah, and it's taken me six months to get, just to start beginning to feel like I'm getting towards something from it. I mean, I got loads from it, but I mean, something that I really like, something that really feels like me, it's taken that long to get there. Um, and yeah, and like I said earlier, uh, I'm now this year did my work going, yes, this is, this has been what I wanted to say. This is yeah. I'm feeling like, and, and yet I know I can push it even further, but and I'm, what, what is next for you? Um, what are you, what are you working on next and what's coming up for you? Um, just continuing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working toward my show in July. Um, I should finish that website. That's not completed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, the business side of, of art, I am really, uh, I need to focus on, um, that's what I want to do. You know, I want this to be a, a business. I, I'd like to, um, sell my art on a regular basis and, and all of that. But, uh, right now I, I just want to continue unpacking that box, unpacking mm -hmm. the gift and continue to be better and um, create and um, connect with other artists. You know, this has just been so fun to get to talk to you because yeah. uh, I've always enjoyed, you are such a wise woman. Um, <laughs> uh, you. Love your blog and what you have to say is so right on that you'll be a great teacher um, oh, and your well, artwork. You know, got a lot of confidence because I'm a week away from beginning the first class. So yeah, that's a yeah. nice lot of confidence. Thank you. Yes. Well, I was really pleased to meet you because as I said, I was just stunned by your work. Every time you posted something, you were one of the people that was like, oh, I want to do that. Although I know <laughs> that's never coming out of me, but um, it's just so gorgeous layers, gorgeous textures and People are going to be seeing this while I'm talking because I'm going to edit that in. Um, but they're just beautiful pieces and I'm so glad to get to meet you. It's really a privilege to meet you. And you're also a lovely person. So that's great too. And, and isn't this neat? This morning I was thinking, I get to visit with an artist halfway around the world for me that I wouldn't have, you know, if we lived in a different time, you know, we couldn't do this. And so... Um, Oh, gosh, what a highlight to my day. To, oh, to get to absolutely. <laughs> well, it's been really great. I know everybody's going to absolutely love this interview, so I'm going to get yeah. all sorts of comments. Um, I, so thank you very much, Susan. Um, yeah. Really loved, enjoyed talking to you. And uh, you, um, it's getting towards the end of my day, but you have a really good day. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm beginning. And hey, let's keep in touch and continue to encourage each other, okay? Definitely. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.